Praise God. We're going to get right into the Word here. Uh, Soul Winning 101. We're going to talk to you about what soul winning is. Some of you are going to say, what in the world is soul winning? Some of you could guess what soul winning is, and some of you are going, oh, no. There's a balance to this teaching before I even... We need to understand that it is Jesus who is the Lord of the harvest that brings souls. I'll help you to understand that in terms of bringing people to Jesus or filling a church or whatever, God has a sovereign move. And he will do what he wants to do. He's working in your life and your friends' lives, those that you love who are unsaved, your family members, to be born again. And I hesitated there because thinking about death and, and uh, when is the baby going to be born, Jesus said that again. This time, not of the flesh, not of the amniotic fluid that is there, not of the water and the flesh, but rather of the Spirit. God has a time. And he, just like he decides generally when the babies are going to come, kingdom and where and who they're relating to at the time. So having said that balance, and that's like that's the heads on the quarter, you've got to flip it over and get the tail because you can't have a quarter without the tail. The tail is God is calling us to be soul winners. He is equipping us. Uh, we have a job to do. And the, the job to do is to share the gospel. And so this series of a couple of weeks of messages is Soul Winning 101, sharing the joys of knowing Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Is He a good thing in your life? You need to share it. Uh, what is soul winning? Short definition. It is simply the Bible's term for sharing, and I'm going to stop and tear this up into little bits, into sharing your relationship with Christ, for, with others. First of all, it's your relationship and to share. I, and I can't imagine, but if you're here this morning and you haven't received Jesus, you know, you're not going to be real effective in this. You've got nothing to say because... Soul winning is first and foremost sharing what has God done for me. Theological, and we want to get you know real complex about it. no, no, no. It's very simple. Has Jesus helped you deal with life better than you would have without Him? Then tell somebody. You know, it's your experience. People say, "Well, I don't know a lot of the Word." Tell them what Jesus did for you. You know, tell them your relationship with Christ with those that God sovereignly puts in your pathway. And how do you do that? Yes, through some of the scriptures. We're going to give you a simple ABC formula. Uh, I mean, it can't get any easier than ABC. Not in today's message, but in this series, we'll give you a simple ABC. How do you, what scriptures do you share? Here's one, two, and three. All in, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And be saved. C, uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, uh, and He will save you. Yeah, I mean, it's that simple. A, B, C. How many of you know your ABCs? Or at least A, B, C, if you don't know all the way to Z. You know, it's that simple. Okay. So, and, and we'll share our own personal experience. I've given you four action verbs. One, these are verbs. I'm not much into language. I, I really didn't do well in, in, in English in high school. Uh, you know, participles and dangling precepts. and I, You know, that's not my bag. But I do know these are action verbs. These aren't something, oh yeah, I believe that. I believe we ought to do this. This is get up and do it time, okay? Uh, number one is responding to the SOS call of God. What is SOS? The salvation of souls. Not escape my hearing this morning, Miriam, when we were praying as the spiritual leadership of this church for this service, and you said, God, the most important thing is that we bring lost souls to you. Changing eternity. Well, that's the SOS call of God. 
The salvation need to come to Jesus. And God is calling us to share with them our experience and the word. That's action verb one is responding to God. Action verb two is reaching out as we reach up to heaven and we feel the heart of God. I mean, it's the heart of God that the lost be saved. The Bible says if one sinner comes to those myriads of angels, the angels rejoice. So let's go make some angels rejoice. You know, one of the things I want to share with you, not today, but just it's, it's a cute phrase, is we need to get over ourselves. Well, I don't know if I do it right. Well, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm shy. I'm get over yourself. Just with neighbors, with friends. I mean, we'll give you some really foundational stuff. None of this is like earth-shattering new. It's foundational, but it's important. Reaching the lost with Christ's gospel of judgment and harshness and condemnation, right? Oh. Gospel of love and forgiveness. Folks, you don't need to tell a sinner that he ought to feel guilty. He already does. He already does. He knows. She knows. They know what they've done and they, they deal with guilt. Why do we have millions and millions and millions of dollars spent on counseling, on uh, psychotropic medications, on all kinds of things? Because we're trying to deal with guilt. Folks, the best way to deal with guilt is to take a chill pill of Jesus. Receive Christ. And in the middle of it, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take medication. I'm not saying that. You know, sometimes and every, every uh, counselee that comes to me is different. Some I recommend they go to the doctor and ask the doctor to give them at least short term something to start on if need be long term. But, uh, and, and some just seem to be able to not need that and push through and that's fine. Whatever you need, but um, reach out to Jesus. Reaching the lost. We put our, I don't say we, we allow Christ to put ourselves together so we can reach out and bring others to Christ through his love and his forgiveness. I've probably told you about my friend, I don't even remember his name, he had shocking red hair. And he was built like a football player in high school. He was my friend. Strong Christian, and that's probably why we hit it off. Uh, but he was a solid Baptist, and his way of soul winning was to come up and say, to kids in high school. You're a sinner and you're lost and you're going to hell. Are you ready to get right with Jesus? How many of you would have gotten saved under that? I just said you're you're scaring the hell right out of me, you know. That's not what Jesus is asking for. He's not asking for that. He's saying they already know their guilty love on them. Tell them God loves them and has a great plan for their lives. And all they need to do is turn their lives over to Him and He'll take control of the mess. It's awesome what God will do. Moving along. (laughs) Planting spiritual seeds. You don't even have to know a lot about farming. You know, you just kind of move out. The, you take out the weeds and you put, take a little, dig a little hole in the dirt and you stick a seed in there. You know, you, you throw maybe a couple kernels of corn in there. And the next thing you know, you've got this whole stalk with multiple ears of corn. Uh, I have never yet seen a grape farmer, or any farmer for that matter, who went out and took the time and the expense and the money to plant the vineyards, to take the weeds out from between, to spray the vineyards, who didn't expect a harvest. What's the whole point of being a farmer if you don't expect a harvest? The point is that you plant a little and you get a lot. There's an increase in that. Unless the government gets involved. Uh, I didn't say that, did I? Uh, 
So what are we doing? We're planting spiritual seeds. Seeds of love. Seeds of forgiveness. Just simple seeds of care and concern. As we go through this series, you're going to see that I'm not saying, you know, dump your load of theology and, and, and the Bible on the first shot. I'm a firm believer, and God may do it different on, a, on rare occasions, but not very often. I'm a firm believer. You have to earn the right to share the gospel with people. And you earn the right by investing yourselves in their lives. And as you invest yourself in their lives, they look at you and think, gee, that's a friend. That's somebody who cares. And somewhere down the line, they begin to look at your life. And that's the second part. Is, is our life in line so that when they look at us, they know, number one, not that well, nobody's perfect, this preacher isn't perfect, but they know that you're striving to live out the gospel of Christ. You're trying to do what Jesus asks for. And that when the stresses of life come, you know where to, get, you know where to go to get help. Number one, I go to the church and ask for prayer and get it. Thank you. It's working. Uh, planting seeds in the hearts of others while expecting a harvest. Expecting a harvest. Why are we shocked when people come to Jesus that we talk to? Farmers plant a seed, they expect a harvest. You plant a spiritual seed of love and faith and, and, and of Christ, you expect a harvest. Now, let me ask you, when that farmer plants the couple of uh, kernels of corn, Tell me the chemical process that that farmer uses to make that stalk grow. Can you tell me that? You can't. You know what? Probably most farmers can't either. Yeah, we know it's going to take rain. We know it's going to take sunshine. But beyond that, it is the life of God within that dead kernel of corn that comes up. It's the life of God. You don't have to necessarily produce life in somebody else. You just simply show them to Jesus and let him produce the life. It's that simple. Last action verb is becoming a member. And I like this. not original with me. I stole it from somebody on the Internet, but I love it. Becoming a member of God's SWAT team. Soul winning action team. Do you know who's supposed to be on God's SWAT team? All of us. Soul winning action team. That means every day we're praying and saying, Lord, show me to the right people. Don't let me overpower them with too much. Don't let me underwhelm them by saying nothing. Give me just the right words. The Old Testament prophet prayed, Lord, I'll open my mouth, you fill it. And that's a good prayer to pray for us. You feel the urging. How many of you felt the urge that God says, tell them about me? Okay. Uh, you know, when God gives you that urge, do it. And you may walk away the first couple of times and say, oh, that was really dumb. I don't think I did much. You planted a seed and that's all God asks. That's all God asks. Uh, so you're becoming a member of God's SWAT team. Four action verbs, responding to God's call, reaching out. You're reaching up to God's call. You're reaching out to the lost. You're planting seeds, and you're becoming a member of the SWAT team. And all of us are called to do that. The theme for this series is very simple. Someone you know needs to know Jesus. Can I repeat that? Usually I give you a scripture verse, and there's a bunch of scripture verses and I'll give you a key scripture verse for this, but God really planted this in my heart. Someone you know needs to know Jesus. That ought to rattle you inside. You've got friends all around you who are going through tough times, you know, and you feel bad for them. The truth of the matter is they need to know Jesus. Now that you know that they need to know Jesus, just drop a seed. That's it. Drop a seed. Sometimes for me, it's, it's just a, if they're unsaved and they're, they're really 
not open to a lot. I just put my hand on their shoulder and, and just say, you know, God loves you. He knows. Wants to help. That's all. You know, if they ask questions, you can talk with them about it, but someone you know needs to know Jesus. We can't necessarily bring them into the kingdom. That's God's work. But we sure can share the love of Jesus with them. Okay? This would be my theme verse. If we got a theme verse, this is it. Proverbs, and then I did the King James because it has the word soul, uh, winning souls. Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Uh, that's break that up a little bit. The fruit. If, if you're a child of God, you ought to be producing fruit. In fact, Jesus says in the Gospel of John that he's called us to produce much fruit. Fruit, the Apostle Paul said, that abounds to Christ. In other words, as we plant the seed in people's hearts and they get saved by the work of God within them, then that becomes glory to God. And the angels are shouting about it. And God says, you're bringing glory to me when you're sharing the gospel. And so, you know, you need to produce fruit. Now, it says the fruit of the righteous. Your pastor does not believe he's righteous because he's a good guy. According to Isaiah and according to Romans in the New Testament, there is none righteous, no, not one. They have all gone out of the way. They have all become unprofitable. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I'm a sinner. But I thank God I'm a sinner saved by the mercy and the grace of God. What is soul winning? It's just one beggar telling another beggar where he found bread. The bread of life. The bread of heaven. Jesus. So the second part of that says, and he that winneth souls is wise. Why? Because you're literally piling up blessings for heaven. Rewards for you. Now we're going to take all those rewards and cast them at the feet of Jesus because he did the work. I get that. That doesn't escape me. But he says, you're wise because when you stand before me, I'm going to get to say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Just as you've been faithful over a few things, now I'm going to make you faithful over much. Rule the universe with me. You know? So he that winneth souls is wise. I don't know, you probably can't see the little print there. It's really a cute thing. It's fishers of men. That's what Jesus said we were to do, and you'll see that in a minute, but it's a, it's a fish, an ichthus, and ichthus is the Greek word for fish, and the reason that's important is because it's literally the, it's a, uh, what do they call that, where, where each letter, the I and the TH, Jesus Christ, uh, and an acronym, yeah, Jesus Christ, Son of God, our Savior, that's what ichthus means. We're fishing, and there's the, the, the hook in the fish's mouth there, and how do we bring them into the kingdom? Through the cross. Jesus does it. So it's a great picture there. So what's a soul? We've been talking about soul winning. Wow. You know what? I think I've inspired you enough this morning. It's, if I get into this, it's going to be another five to ten minutes, and I don't want to do that. I, you know, I want to release you being enthused to go out and share. And we'll come back next week. We'll pick up here uh, talking about what a soul is. Why do we call it soul winning, and why does the soul need to be won? Uh, but believe me, it does. The soul of every man. I'll just, I'll just give you that one from Ezekiel, and we'll come back next week. Ezekiel 11 says, all souls are mine. All souls are mine. And yet the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. That's why it needs one. Because every man is born with a dead soul. 